Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Welcome back to another True Crime live stream with me, Gizzle K from Grizzly True Crime. Today we are continuing to look at the case of Megan Amirowitz, a 19 year old who's on trial for burning her dad with chemicals, with lye and water. And this happened on October 1st, 2021. She just turned 18 on that day. And she wanted to go for she had a hair salon appointment she also had um i'm monitoring the court by the way they're coming back in the next three minutes she had a hair salon appointment okay then she had this party that she planned at this hotel and when she woke up she saw her dad on the couch according to her story and everything we've heard so far and his blood alcohol level drunk like passed out drunk so she got really mad from what we're hearing and threw a whole lot of stuff at him and on him bread, hair dye solution, um, cleaning chemicals and things, and then also lye powder. Now, lye powder, when you then add water, has a reaction that makes it heat up to up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So this caused chemical burns. Now, he was so passed out. He was unconscious, they say, at the time. So that's interesting. We're learning more as we go along. Because uh, I'm sure there's lots of moving parts of this case and I will be covering it with you So thank you so much all for being here and for supporting the channel for being members. Uh, let me just quickly get the chat going as well There that should be good. Let's just see Wait for it. There we go. <laughs> okay, so that is what we're looking at um, this dad Conrad Emirowitz was actually taken to the hospital and he spent five months in intensive care. He was 64 years old. And because of the nature of those chemical burns, he literally had both of his legs amputated, a tracheotomy, I hope I'm saying that right, and a few other procedures along the way in those five months. Then he was taken into the hospice care and then he died five months after she had thrown all that stuff on him, right? So she has been charged with domestic violence and this misdemeanor for throwing that drain cleaner on her dad. And so if she's convicted, she is likely to face life in prison. So we shall see what more. I'm asking that as much as debates are welcome, you can have your own opinion. But let's just chill, okay, because it's been very heated, the morning <laughs> session. If you missed it, go check it out. Um, it's on my channel there as a replay, and you can get the opening statements, a whole recap of the case, um, the first witness, and then the morning session from today, right? But man, things the, the chat's getting a bit heated, and I understand that this is it's quite a, a contentious topic, right? It's like, oh, is it an alcoholic father, and what was he doing? And everyone wants to know, was he abusive or not? Apparently, he was naked on the couch, you know? There's a lot of factors. Um, of course, violence is never the answer. It's never an excuse. But did she know that this lie and water would cause that reaction or not? Was it just like a teenager having a fit of rage? Possibly. So let's see where it goes. Um, we are basically going to be like the the grizzly jury over here, you know what I mean? We've got to hear all the facts before we can even really get upset, right? Uh, Kimberly Davis, thank you so much for your $3 super chat. Really appreciate that. I'm monitoring this court fee. Just hold on one second. Yeah, it's still looking the same as when we last left. And apologies for being just a few minutes late from what I said. I said I'd be at about 20 past. And then I got you a little bit late because <laughs> Fury was demanding his pate. Okay, he's just woken up from his nap. <laughs> Fury's my cat, if you didn't know. Sorry, I look very orange with this in the background too. Sorry about that. But we will be waiting to see when this comes back on. So let's just make that a bit smaller. Wait, <laughs> so we can actually do this. So this would be day two of the trial. Yesterday was the jury selection opening statements and the first witness 
Janet, I got an email from the court and the court said that they are actually not streaming this trial on Zoom. And they've got the media pool with their cameras in the courtroom, which is why we can only see it really from these streams. So, yeah, that's right, Stefan. We are juror number 13. Okay, so are you guys all caught up or no? Are you good? Do you know what this case is about yet? Uh, Dolly B says, thanks, G, for all your work and dedication. Thank you so much, and thanks for being a member for five months. And hello, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to all my moderators. Uh, they've got wrenches next to their name, and they help to keep the chat grizzly, as we say, which grizzly like a bear, which is up to the grizzly true crime standard, which means try and keep it kind, okay? Yeah, so we're looking here um, to each other and just to everyone as much as we can. We could snark it up where appropriate. At this point, I'm not sure it's appropriate yet to snark, you know what I mean? But don't worry. I'm sure there will come a time. Where we'll be snarking it up about something or someone. Now, Pink Diamond says, who has lie around the house in these days and times? <laughs> um, so we saw her brother testify. We also don't know what the circumstances are of the parents, you know, getting divorced. Where was the mom? Why? You know what I mean? Like, why was Megan staying with her dad how long did she stay there was it a, her whole life was it only the last few months or years or what is it you know what i mean so much to consider still um but austin her brother said who had moved out he said that he hadn't seen lie around the house yeah jane check the description box as well and i hope the recap was was pretty good now because we recap a lot of it right now that's pretty much what we know is that when she turned 18 she threw a whole bunch of stuff on her sleeping, I say it's like this, because they're calling it the sleeping dad death trial, right? On Court TV and Lone Crime Network, that's what they're calling it. Nap time dad, <laughs> or passed out drunk dad. I don't know which one it is, but he was sleeping, unconscious apparently on the, on the couch. On to October 1st, 2021, and he died in March of 2022. Now she's on trial. Okay, so let me just quickly... Uh, just get you a little bit of a banner, a border, so that you could see what's going on here. Yeah, they don't use life or bugs, says where the wind blows. <laughs> yeah, because they were talking about like a bug, a bug bomb. The dad said that there was like a bug bomb that he set off that day as well, him and Megan. But later, it seems like he said that she threw the stuff on him. Okay, so we go like that. Well, they should be back. They said at half past one, their witness will be ready. So that's now for the four minutes late, you guys. Four minutes late. <laughs> no, I'm just grateful that we can see anything. Because sometimes in these trials, as you know, we don't see a thing. Okay. So, like that. Uh, where the window says a bag lies like a bag of cement. It's This was a bottle we saw. Um, I get what you mean. But we did see the bottle earlier and the exhibits that they showed from the photos from the couch, right? Okay. Please make sure that you like this video and share it as well with hashtag Megan Emirowitz or Megan Emirowitz trial so that uh, others can be notified that we are covering this trial. And we'll probably be covering it. Let's see how it goes, but morning and afternoon sessions. And I think, I'm not 100% sure how long this trial will last but it seems to me like it could speculatively be until maybe the 19th which is about a week of trial right vasa melon thank you so much pt notaman i gave fury a treat which you <laughs> sponsored earlier <laughs> everybody's getting treats today thank you so much watermelon fun all right here they come okay okay put the sound put the sound on i could see movement in the court <laughs> Jeeps la says lies a normal drain cleaner. Apparently so. But did she know to mix it with water or was she just throwing water on her dad as well so that he could wake up, right? Which one is it? Okay. <laughs> Where the wind blows says, now I have to call around and see if you could buy lie in a bottle. You see that there's somebody walking past. <laughs> so we're waiting, we're waiting. Okay, so, and she says, abuse or not, I have a hard time seeing her as a victim. She attacked while he was passed out. She was 18. She seems immature with no remorse or intent. So, understandable. 
I'm just I'm still staying on the new, on the neutral fence. I just want to know more because, as you know, I've done a course recently on domestic violence, on stalking, harassment, and on coercive control. And we looked at this case like Sally Challen. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but there's a lot of things to consider. Like, uh, okay, like with Sally Challen, like hmm, you know, where someone can really act out from possibly abuse at the home. We don't know that that's that that happened here. But that's point. I'm staying neutral because we just don't know. There's too little information right now. That's an interesting one too. Mary says, I wonder what part of the home did Megan get the lie drain clean from? Good point. Good point. <laughs> Donald's like, about Brian trial not being televised. Well, we don't, we don't know that yet, if it is or isn't. The camera's in courtroom. I'm going to guess it will be no cameras in the courtroom. <laughs> Remember the Lori Vallow Daybell trial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Grammy Rita says, that's the question. Were they having any stopped up drains? Mm-hmm. We want to know that too. Did the dad have a habit of being naked or did he wake and shower and then lay down naked because he didn't feel well? Could have been that too. And if he got up to get up and shower and rinse all that off, well, that could have made the lie react the way it did. You know what I mean? And lie is, uh, high, what is it called? Wait, caustic soda? Lie. L-Y-E. <laughs> Didn't know much about lie before that. Alkali hydroxide. Caustic soda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Jamie said it's used to make homemade soap. I've seen that as well. Um, someone earlier was saying that they do that. Yeah. That's right. Janice says we are lucky to get partial audio. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are so lucky, you guys. <laughs> We have an attitude of gratitude here. We love partial audio rather than no audio. And we love visuals too. And if you don't know what we're talking about in the morning stream, ah, the audio feed was a little wonky from the court feed. <laughs> like every time they asked a question, we couldn't hear it. But anyway, let's hope the court feed is good now. So yeah, we're just waiting. We're just waiting. Okay, let me just quickly look. Lye is an alkali metal hydroxide traditionally obtained by leaching wood ashes or a strong alkali which is highly soluble in water, producing caustic basis solutions. Lye most commonly refers to sodium hydroxide, but historically has been used for potassium hydroxide. It's commercially manufactured using a membrane cell chloracali process. Probably, I probably messed that second name up. It is supplied in various forms, such as flakes, pellets, microbeads, coarse powder, or a solution. Lye has traditionally been used as a major ingredient in soap making. So, yes, that's what it is. What are they doing? <laughs> Hurry up, everyone. <laughs> they are late now. Yes, an attitude of gratefulness. Attitude of gratitude. It rhymes and everything. Yes. So, ooh, yes, we saw this earlier. Oh, my word, you guys. Okay, so, yes, trigger warning and all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It made his fingernails curl back, she said. Because the friend came over. So if you missed that, so far we've had um, one of Megan's friends testify, the one who Megan texted. She sent a Snapchat photo. Megan, sent her friend, Kayla Busquet, a Snapchat photo of her crying and said she had a fight earlier. And the friend found the dad. Okay, we'll boost it if it's low, don't worry. Should be boosted already. Judge Valentine. Calling People vs. Amirowitz, case number 22-281-519, FC. Jason DeSantis, the people you're on, good afternoon. Frederick Bell on behalf of Ms. Amirowitz, who's standing to my left. Thank you. Trooper Hunter Smith. Thank you. Megan Amirowitz. Thank you. Bring in the jury, please. There she is, everyone. Amanda, what her friend saw was terrible, right? So welcome to the afternoon session of this trial. Right, 
I see the court sound is off now because the jury just entered the room. I can't see that she's cuffed. No, she's not cuffed. You be, be seated. I hope you had a nice lunch. Mr. DeSanister, it's your next witness, please. Thank you, Judge. We're going to call Dr. Connor Barani. He's already present. Thank you. Mr. Barani, sir, can you please raise your right hand? You'll be given the oath. Under penalty of perjury, you saw me swear from the testimony you're about to give before this court. Is it true? It's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. Thank you. Can you state your full name for the record? Yes, I will. My first name is Kanu, K-A-N-U, and last name is Virani, V-I-R-A-N-I. -I. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Sanders. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Virani, uh, you are now currently retired, is that right? Yes. Where did you spend your career? I worked as a medical examiner for Oakland County starting from 1991, and I retired in April 1st, 2022. All right. Uh, and so you served there for 31 years approximately? Yes. Okay. And uh, what kind of training and education do you have? Well, I did uh, finish medical school in India before I came in the United States, and that was completed in 1979. One year of internship I completed in India as well, and in 1981 I came in the United States did four years of residency training at Northeastern Ohio University in Akron and Canton area. I did one year of special training with college fellowship at NYU and New York City Medical Examiner's Office in Forensic Pathology. And I work as a forensic pathologist or medical examiner for New York City for about uh, two years and in 1991 moved to Oakland County. Can you tell us what kind of certifications you have? Pardon me? Sorry. Can you tell us what kind of certifications you have? Oh, certification. Uh, I have, I am board certified in uh, forensic pathology, anatomical, and clinical pathology. Those are the part of the pathology we practice in hospital-based area. And uh, how many autopsies do you think you've performed in your career? Uh, well over 20,000 altogether. And have you been certified as an expert by a court? Yes. How many times do you think that's been? Again, well over 1,000 times. Judge, I'd move to admit to uh, the Dr. Varani as an expert in forensic pathology. And I have no objection, Your Honor. I... Okay. The court is going to qualify you as an expert, sir, in forensic pathology. Go ahead, Mr. Sanders. Thank you, Judge. Can you tell the jury what the duties are of a medical examiner? Medical examiner is, like I said, are the specialized forensic pathologist who uh, do the autopsies and toxicology in the county where they are appointed to determine the cause and manner of death. And those causes of uh, those people who die either suspiciously, violently, or otherwise unexplained and uh, did not have enough doctor's care at the time of death, so we end up getting those cases and we do autopsy and figure out why the person died. You use the terms cause and manner of death. Can you tell us what cause of death means? Cause of death is either a natural disease or any event which is ending somebody's life. And a manner of death is how this cause of death came about. If it came about by natural disease process, we call them a natural manner. If it comes about unnatural way, like somebody fell from the roof or somebody got in an auto collision, we call those accidents. And if somebody purposefully takes somebody else's life and person end up dying, we call them homicide. If somebody does everything by himself or herself to end the life, we call them suicide. What does mechanism of death mean? Mechanism of is a death is a final event or physiological event how and why the death came about. So you might, somebody might have a disease process since long time, but what was the final event which ended the final few moments of the life and why person died? 
Were you working as a medical examiner on March 7th, 2022? Yes. Okay. Did you perform the autopsy on a Conrad Amirowitz? Yes, I did. Do you recall that autopsy? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you tell us about the process of performing an autopsy? The normal process is to examine the entire body. Uh, if a person is wearing any clothes, of course, we remove the clothes and then examine front to back, head to toe, and if we find any unusual finding on the outside, we uh, have the photographic evidence taken. And then it is followed by the opening the body, like a chest and abdominal area, so that we can examine the heart, lungs, and all abdominal organs for any abnormalities or injuries. That is followed by opening the head to look at the inside of the cranium and the brain, again for disease process or injury. And finally, the neck area to see again any disease process or natural event that might create the issue with the circulation or breathing. Now, what was the process you followed on Mr. Amirowitz's autopsy? Exactly the same process I just described. Okay. Was there any departure from normal in that process in this case? No, uh, there was none. Uh, other than that, uh, his limbs or lower legs were amputated before he died. So I could not examine his legs and feet. So that was the only uh, unusual thing. When you, were, um, when you perform an autopsy, do you consult many medical records that might be available? A person was in a hospital or previously was in a hospital which is related to the cause of death, we find, yes, we usually get the hospital record as much as we can. Did you do that in this case? Yes. What records did you review? We mostly received the... Uh, the pile of record from the Genesis uh, in a Grand Blanc, which is the hospital, where he was taken after he sustained the injury. And what did you find when you were performing your autopsy on Mr. Ramirez? From outside, he had several healing ulcers, means the top of the skin, some of the superficial, some of the deep, uh, were present on the head, the forehead, the chest, the left side of the shoulder, the upper arm, uh, the abdominal area, entire back, and some spotted ulcer on the thighs. Uh, they were like s some uh, injury we sustain and it doesn't want to heal and continue growing again and then the crust formation and then you take it out and again it starts bleeding and keep on going. So he had those, uh, we call them chronic ulcers. So on, as of March 7, 2022, some of the injuries he sustained still had not fully healed. Is that what we should understand? Yes. Okay. Um, did you discover anything else in the autopsy of uh, In his inside examination when I was uh, doing his uh, separate organs, yes, his, his heart, he was 64 when he died. So his heart was enlarged. His, the wall of the thickness on both right and left side of the heart were thicker than normal. His inside heart chambers were slightly dilated, indicating that he had some chronic heart disease like hypertension, which many a time usually causes this kind of changes if it is not treated very well and going on. Along with it, I also found his kidneys were also having the effect of the long-standing high blood pressure. So they, instead of nice, smooth, shiny surface, they were having a pitting surface, which is a common finding in a long-standing high blood pressure disease process. Were you aware that he'd been placed on dialysis while at the hospital? Yes. I, I, when I look at the chart, I, I was made aware that he was on dialysis because his kidneys were not functioning properly. Do you know why they weren't functioning properly? That I could not figure it out whether they put dialysis before he sustained this injury or after he did. Uh, very likely after this sustaining injury because he was having a congestive heart failure on and on. He was on medication to treat those ulcers and, and, and heart condition and sometimes that happens the kidneys don't function properly. I mean they did not stop completely functioning but they were not functioning properly so according to the hospital doctor's best judgment they put, them, put him on a dialysis so that his other unusual chemicals don't start building up in the body. Can you explain congestive heart failure in this case? Heart failure is 
where the heart cannot pump blood properly either because of the inheritance process problem with the heart itself or because of the high blood pressure like in a lot of us have in our older age. So the pumping of the blood against the increased pressure makes the heart strain more, struggle more and that's why the chamber get dilated, the muscle get thicker and still cannot function properly then it start failing means the proper pumping of the blood circulation is not going all over the body we call it congestive heart failure. Did that happen in this case? Yes. Do you know why? Again because of this non-healing ulcer since uh, October uh, he sustained and he died in a March so uh, longer than five months he was in and out of the hospital or in the hospital continuously being treated for this kind of ulcers and chemical uh, burns so this could be the mostly part of it on top of it chronic hypertensive heart disease and kidney problem. Did you determine the mechanism of his death? In his case mechanism is complications of the uh, the this chemical burns means the congestive heart failure on and off uh, infection in the lung they were treating him all the time and uh, the, and the, the chronic kidney failure that the combination of those com complications from the heart the lungs and kidney combined uh, ended his life okay and uh, so that's what complications means yes so would these complications have occurred but for the burns upon him uh, without those uh, chemical burns he should not have those complications of course and uh, how long he would have lived, I cannot tell you, but he would not have died without the chemical burns and complications. Okay. Did you determine the cause of death? His cause of death was chemical burns with complications. Okay. And did you determine the manner of death? I classified as a homicide. And what did you base that upon? Based on the information I was provided that uh, somebody uh, threw the lye and the water on him while while he was lying down, almost face down on the left side, because the burn pattern is on the back and on the left side, so sorry, on the right side and face down. So uh, that created uh, the starting situation, and that was done by somebody on, on purpose to hurt him, and that's why classification is homicide. So I want to ask you about that. You said the lie and the water. Was there anything to, in, what made you think it was lie and water? Uh, well, part of it is the information provided to me. Of course, five months later, I cannot do any test on, on his body to identify that. But again, the non-healing nature of the ulcer tells me that some chemical was there which was preventing those ulcer to not to heal properly. So that, that, that's the second uh, medical uh, information from me, and the other information came from investigation. And you said in particular the burn pattern indicated that he was lying face down and on his side? Uh, face down mostly, maybe slightly on his right side because the right side of the shoulder was not, not having any burns. It okay. Um, and when you're preparing an autopsy, do you have to memorialize this autopsy in some way? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Is that part of your job? Yes. Do you do that every single time? Yes. When do you do that in relation to perform the autopsy? Well, uh, the right while do, doing the autopsy, doing the autopsy, and just after the autopsy, uh, writing those notes, and then uh, doing the dictation and, and preparing the report immediately following the autopsy on the same day. Judge, may I approach the witness? Yes, sir. Showing the witness what I previously marked as people's proposed exhibit number three. Yes, this is the copy of the eight-page autopsy report and toxicology on Konrad Emirovich. Thank you. And um, you said in the toxicology report, what is that? It is a routine process for medical examiner to take the blood and other fluid for analysis. Uh, many a time we find the cause of death from the uh, results of this analysis. Uh, some people die of alcohol intoxication, some people die of drug intoxication combination, 
Uh, so every case when the fluid and blood is available, we always save it and send it to the lab. And they analyze it, they send us the report, we call it toxicology report. Doctor, is this report fairly and accurately depicts your findings and your process here? Yes. Judge, I move to admit People's Proposal Exhibit 3. Mr. No? No objection. So admitted. Okay. If I can just publish a little bit to the jury, Judge. Yes. Jury seat number one. Thank you. Okay, let's see what they're going to show us. If it's bad, I'm going to put it all. Can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, the What are we looking at here on the screen? Well, on the left side is the first page of the autopsy report, and on the right side is the last page of the autopsy. Okay. And what information is contained on the left side, the autopsy protocol? Uh, his name, his uh, case number, his, his age, uh, his gender, um, his uh, date of death, uh, where he was pronounced, and time of death, his date of autopsy, where I did the autopsy, and what date and time I did the autopsy, as well as the cause of death and manner of death. And on the other page is the final line of your opinion. Can you read that for us? Yeah, that is uh, final, uh, the last page of the autopsy report. I call it opinion, means my explanation why I determine the cause of death uh, as it is. And uh, that, that it reads that this 64-year-old white male, Konrad Emiro, Emirovich, died of chemical burns with complications. He sustained these burns when caustic chemical was thrown on him. He survived longer than five months with medical treatment for these burns. There were no other physical injuries. The manner of death is homicide and then my name and signature on it. Thank you. Uh, now, Dr. Veroni, you, you indicated looking at the toxicology report can sometimes tell you uh, um, the cause of death and perhaps into alcohol intoxication. Um, in this case, you may have we talked about this before at a previous hearing, correct, that this person was someone who drank? Well, because he survived that long, more than five months after injury, we could not run the alcohol five months old, of course and uh, he was on hospice care lately before he died so we did not find any alcohol in his system at the time of death but that doesn't mean there wasn't alcohol in the system at the time he was injured is that correct that is correct i don't have anything else judge thank you mr thank you. Um, so doctor you can't say well let's put it this way you testified earlier did the liver show any alcohol damage? No, sir. All right. And given the time since the incident and the date of death, uh, I believe you testified that the liver can really regenerate and, and heal itself, correct? Yes, actually it does. And uh, a lot of people like to hear that, that if somebody drinks and then doesn't drink for next five, six, seven days, the effect of the alcoholic process on the liver completely heals. So within a week, the liver is back to normal again. But if somebody continue drinking daily without stopping, then liver doesn't have time to recover completely. And then ongoing process creates the chronic liver failure, alcoholic liver disease. But people who are so-called binge drinkers, they usually don't get those liver disease, long-standing liver disease. Okay. So do you know what his alcohol level was when he was admitted to the hospital? No, sir. I, I, I was not provided that information. Only information I was provided that he was, quote-unquote, highly intoxicated at the time. All right. And if I told you it was uh, 355 milliliters, would that make any sense to you? If it is, uh, uh, Judge, just, I don't have a problem with the question, except I believe the measure was milligrams per deciliter. Okay. It was. 
right. If it was done on a whole blood, that is normal, we understand. But if it is done by the hospital on a serum, then you have to reduce about 20% to make it a whole blood. Okay. So unless you look at it, you really don't know what's there. No, I exactly. I do not know what part they analyze. In a hospital, mostly they analyze the serum, which is a clear part of the blood. In normal practice, like we do and the, uh, the state police does, is the whole blood. So the whole blood is usually about 20% less than the serum level. Okay. Now, let's talk about the hypertensive heart disease. What all is that? Well, it is the blood pressure which normally is a systolic about 120, diastolic about 80. So 120 over 80 is a normal reading. Anybody who has a higher than that, those numbers are called hypertension. Usually 130 to 140 range is called the upper limit. Uh, as we grow older, that limit go up higher and higher. Uh, like people like me who is close to 70, my systolic pressure usually is around 150, 160, which is normal. It's not hypertension. But diastolic remains the constant. But if it's 80, between 80 and 90, they call it borderline. Anything above the 90, irrespective of age, is hypertension. So that increased pressure makes the inc extra strain on the heart. And that's why we call it hypertensive chronic disease because the heart cannot pump properly. All right. Now, based on the heart you saw in this case, is that something that had just occurred or is it something that dragged out and had been going on for a significant amount of time? It has been going on since a long time because otherwise I would not see the changes in the heart at the autopsy uh, if it came within a short period of time. This has been going on for years. Correct. Okay. Now, do you remember taking a look at all at the intake records at Genesis Hospital? As far as my old memory, <laughs> yes, yes, I would say yes. But uh, specifically, if you ask me something number-wise, that what was that? I, I cannot answer that. Okay. And that it's been a year and a half. Been a while. All right. Kidney disease. Uh, you indicated there were some issues with the kidneys. Yes. Again, that same hypertension creates the damage on the kidney. Well, uh, medical theory is that either kidney start creating problem first and that causes the hypertension, or hypertension is first and then causes the kidney disease. We as a medical field, we do not understand exactly which comes first, but they are very closely related to each other. One doesn't go without the other one. Okay. And so they're related, correct? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, that that had probably been going on for years too? Yes. Okay. Now, do you know if he was on dialysis when they brought him in? That part I do not know. But he, at some point, was on dialysis, correct? Yes. Right. Now, if if they had uh, brought him home from hospice and not put him on dialysis, would that contribute to his death? That would be, yes. If it, Like I say, without proper functioning of kidney, we cannot excrete all the metabolic uh, chemical product from the body. And that building up metabolic product would create the complications like you, you already had other complications, it add on complication I should say. Yes. Okay. So that, that's a complication and that would be part of it as well, right? Yes. So if you went home on hospice, um, what is hospice, do you know? Hospice is somebody sent home uh, and uh, say, okay, somebody going to die within short time. So the keeping that person in the hospital is not worthwhile, uh, both ways. Uh, so they are sent home and for the home care only. And somebody, either, either practitioner, nurse practitioner, or somebody 
visit them almost daily or every other day and check on them. So that much I know about hospice. Yeah. And the goal is to kind of keep them comfortable and let them... Correct. Uh, and, and again, if they don't get the dialysis, that's going to contribute to it as well, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, other physical injuries, I understand, his legs were amputated. Did you take a look at his hands? Yeah, his... Uh, uh, let me check. I think sure. his left hand had uh, the finger which were not uh, looking good, particularly the yeah left hand. So the end part of those left hand fingers, from the little finger up to the index finger, they were kind of short, and the nails were getting darker. Okay. Now. You didn't do any tests on this chemical, did you? No, I cannot, like I say, it was way time wise, it was not possible for me to do it. All right. And you obviously didn't interview Mr. Amirowitz? No. Um, you rely on whatever information is in the police report, correct? Yes, sir. And if that information is hearsay and based on everything else, you still get to rely on it, right? Yeah, uh, that, is, that is accepted. Uh, for me as a forensic pathologist, I have to rely on a lot of other department information. All right. So, um, you go with that information no matter what people have testified to when it comes out, correct? Correct. Uh, now, um, you had indicated there was some issue with the lungs? Well, his lungs were heavy, loaded with the fluid, and also there was a scarring on the surface of both lungs, which as a pathologist tells me that he had on and off infection in the lungs which were then treated with the antibiotic and healed and during the healing process the scar information happened. So that's what I saw and that's the process of the lung problem. Alright, so do you know when the lungs were damaged? Again, only thing I can say is, is it's a long, many many weeks, maybe months injury. It's not like a one or two days old injury. So that is the best I can tell you, sir. Okay, so it could have been a long time ago, but it's been working on it over time. Yes. Uh, so, uh, had, had he been healthy with all, without the lungs kidney and liver, well, because the liver was okay, lungs and kidney, um, would he have survived? Uh, if, like I said, that if he did not develop this complication, terminal end complications, uh, yeah, he would have survived. I, nobody can tell how long, but he would have survived. Sure, I mean, he could have had a heart attack, possibly, at any point in time. It could happen to anybody any time. So, uh, but he had some extra stuff going on. His heart and his kidneys weren't in good shape, right? Yeah, it was. It was to begin with before the injury, but that does not really prevent us to say that the injury and complication caused him death. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Have Mr. Sanders. Thank you. So, Dr. Varani, I want to ask a couple of questions. Um, the first thing is, you, you talked about the nails on his on his left hand getting darker. What was that indicating to you? It means, again, the circulation in that hand was not proper, going properly, and that's why many a time the nails are the first one to show a little bluish discoloration. Uh, that indicates that the circulation in the arm was not proper. Okay. I want to make sure I understand properly. The hypertensive heart disease and the kidney damage, those things go together, you said? Yes. Um, and those were things that existed for some time before the actual incident with the burns? Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell us how long that had been there? No. Okay. Uh, I cannot. Again, the effect on the kidneys and the heart I observed at the time of autopsy tells me that it is a long-term process. He has hypertension months and months, sometimes years. Otherwise, he would not demonstrate those 
physical, visible abnormalities in the heart and kidneys. But up to the point that he had been burned, those conditions had not caused his death. No, uh, it might have little add-on effect on it, because the pre-existing condition. But in forensic pathology, pre-existing disease, in spite of having pre-existing disease, the injury take the precedent, and the, the cause and manner of death are classified according to the final injury. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the infections in the lungs, the scarrings in the lungs, you said. Um, do you know if the scarring, I mean, what was the cause of the scarring to your determination? Again, it's infection. Anywhere there is an infection, when it heals, if, if you have a cut in the skin, it will vis make a visible scar. But inside, you you see the scar, which is, we call it adhesions, means the surface of the lungs supposed to be smooth and floating in the chest cavity, and there should be a vacuum between the chest wall and the surface of the lung, so the lung can uh, collapse, exma uh, expand, and again breathe and breathe out. In his case, the lungs were stuck with the inside of the wall on both sides. It is scarring. It is called adhesions, means the surface to surface stuck together. Only way it happens when somebody has on and off infection and healing, that thin lining on the surface, on the chest wall and the lung, stick together and, and start forming the skull. So the only way that can happen is from repeated infections? Repeated infection, yes. This is not something that can occur from some sort of single one-time acute incident? No, sir. Okay. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about relying on uh, the reports you're given. You indicated you had to rely sometimes on reports from other agencies, correct? Yes, that is that is part of our, our statute, medical examiner's statute. And that went into your determination of the manner of death, correct? Yes. Does it go into your determination of cause of death? Uh, cause of death, mostly what I observe during the autopsy. Very rarely, I have done, I can count on my one hand finger that cases, that I had totally had to rely on information to find the cause of death. Because then physically and physiologically, you, I don't have any visible injury on the body, visible, visible disease process in the body. Just the example I'll give you is that if somebody's old person sleeping and somebody put the soft pillow on the face and keep little pressure, person stop breathing, person dies. You don't see any injury whatsoever related to that part. But the information is documented somewhere that this is how it happened. I call it a suffocation or asphyxia as a cause of death, which is totally relying on information. But that is very rarely happened. In this case, I saw the visible injury, I saw the congestive heart failure, I saw the complications inside of the body. So that cause of death is there, but manner, of course, I have to rely on information. And so in determining manner of death, would it be fair to say that you can take comparisons, see if the information you're given from outside matches your physical examinations, and if those things go together, you can declare it a homicide? Correct. Is that what happened in this case? Yes. Thank you. I don't have anything else. Just briefly. Doctor, you don't know how long that chemical was on the body when it was burned, do you? Uh, the, from the, the information was the what day the chemical was thrown, and that's only how long I can tell you. But how long it stayed on the body before some hospital people cleaned it up, I do not know. That. All right. And you rely on whatever those reports say to make your determination, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Nothing further. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you, sir. Your excuse is away. Thank you. Judge. Judge, I have one more witness today. I'm going to check and see in the hallway if they're here. Thank you. Okay, they've got one more witness, you guys. Wow, okay, so he's set on this is homicide because com it was complications from the chemical burns. Um, what Sean is saying. Thank you. Okay, go to the next witness. Just going to leave this one here until we get the next one. Good afternoon, sir. 
Bethany. Can you state your name for the record, please? Blake Shelton. And sir, raise your right hand. Can you look at the name? So. Under a penalty of perjury, you saw me swear from that the testimony you're about to before this court today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. Can you please state and spell your name for the record? Blake Bradford Shelton. B L A K E. B R A D. F-O-R-D-S-H-E-L-T-O-N. Thank you. And do you know a Megan Amiros? Yes. Do you see her in court today? Yes. Can you please point to her and identify that something she's wearing for us? Uh, over there in the blue blouse. Judge, ask the record reflect the witness identify the defendant. No, Judge. So noted. Um, Mr. Shelton, how do you know Megan Amiros? Uh, through uh, my former friend Austin, who was his sister. Okay. Um... Did you have contact with Megan um, around October 8th, 2021? Um, I can't recall the date. Um, not, not that I can remember, no. Okay. Did you, do you have text conversations with her occasionally back then? Um, in the time prior to the accident, um, I, would, uh, I would speak to her if I was at Austin's house. Uh, there was very little text messaging, uh, very, very little. Judge, can I approach the witness? Yes, sir. Judge, I'm showing the witness who I previously marked as people's for both at 16 and 17. Can you take this one? Sure. Do you recognize those? Yes. What are they? Uh, these are photos of text messages between me and Megan. Okay, so that's a conversation you had with Megan? Yes. Um, does that fairly accurately show the conversation that you had? Yes. Okay. Judge, I move to admit people's photos get 16 and 17. No objection. So admitted. And I'm going to publish to the jury, Judge. So we... So these are screenshots, is that right? Uh, these are photos of uh, the, me the messages we had, yeah. Okay. I've got my cursor here on people's exhibit 16. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Got my cursor here on People's Exhibit 16. Um, oh, it's not showing up. On Exhibit 16, do you see a date there? Uh, yes. What date is that? That's uh, October 8th, 2021. Okay, and so you were having a conversation. I assume the me in red is you. Yes. The blue in, in, in the name in blue, Megan, is Megan. Yes. The defendant. Yes. Okay. So it looks like you reached out to her asking about some money. Is that right? Uh, yes, we okay. had, uh, I think she had reached out to me about uh, helping her out with a song for a school project or something along those lines, uh, and it was something I believe that she was going to pay me to help her out with. Okay, um, and so then she started telling you, she said, I get that, I, I get that, sorry, I'm just in a hard place, you probably heard what happened, right? Yes. Did you, had you heard about what happened with her father at that point? I had not, no. Okay. So then she goes on to say, I'm dealing with just dealing with a few things first before I can get to the better things. And you indicate you had not heard. Yes. Okay. And then on Exhibit 17, there's a series of photos there, isn't that right? Those are videos, yes. Okay, so that's a series of videos? Yes. Judge, I'm going to show on the screen here for authentication purposes what I proposed Exhibit 18. And I'm just going to play for a moment. Sorry, Judge, I'm not sure why it's not playing here. This is my only texting for Friday morning I woke up and... Do you recall those videos? I do, yes. Is that the video that you were sent? Yes. Okay, now there was a series of videos. Um, these have been spliced together and part of them edited so that there's something not admissible in there. Um, but did that fairly accurately record what you were sent? Yes. Judge, I move to admit people's Exhibit 18. I guess my question is, have you, have you seen these videos now? I've, I've seen them, yes. Okay. And they're what happened on that date? Um, those were the videos I received of her, um, to my knowledge, explaining what she... Well, before had, you get into yeah. what was actually in the videos... Do you recognize the videos as Mr. DeSantis is going to play them? Have you? Yes, I've, I've seen them. His indication is that they have been edited. Have you seen um, the edited version? 
Judge, I have not shown him the edited version. It was just a cut thing out that I discussed with Mr. Miller. Okay. He did, but those are the videos she sent you, correct? Yes. Then I won't object. Thank you. So admitted? Thank you. I'll just play to the court from the beginning. Are you going to send this on the video because I don't feel like texting, but Friday morning I woke up and um, I went to go see my dad because I had hair appointments, so I needed him to take me. And he was drunk, and I was like upset because he's like an alcoholic and wanted to stop and everything. Um, so I threw a bag of bread at him because I was angry. I'm not going to throw something that's going to hurt him. And a few, I threw a few other things, but there were, there were, I threw like at the end of the couch so it like, wasn't near him. And um, I left. And when I left, I said goodbye to him. He said goodbye. And then um, I needed his like card info for the hotel because I was going to a hotel for my 18th birthday. And then um, I had Kayla, my friend Kayla, um, go to my house because she lives on the street to get it from him. And she was like, Megan, your dad's not okay. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, there's like burns on it. And I was like, what? Like, I was so confused because I was like, why? Why is he like, what is happening? I was like, my instant thought was he probably like stood up and fell because he is, he's prone to hurting himself when he's drunk. And I'm always the one who has to go and help him off the floor and make sure he's okay. Um, so I was like, call my brother. I didn't know what to do. Like, so I just told her to call my brother and they called an ambulance. And it's like, apparently there were like chemical burns on him. And I'm like, I was so confused. Like, I didn't even know what's happening. And then my brother's like yelling at me saying, I did it. I didn't do it. I, I When I left, he was perfectly fine. I would never intentionally hurt my dad. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm against violence. That my dad's like my best friend. I'd never hurt him. And my brother is like, my brother wasn't even there. And Lucas, Kobe, and Bella West over here are like, since they're our best friend, they were like talking to the police and they were like, yeah, Megan did it. She did it. Were you there? No, you weren't there. Either was I. Nobody knows what happened. But they all blamed me because people like you in this world don't know how to shut up. And so they all like, they blamed me. They said it was my fault. I wasn't there. I didn't. Cops came to the hotel I was at and they were like, so your dad is severely injured. He's in the hospital and everyone's saying you did it. You mean everyone who wasn't there? Is that true? Because... What? And they were saying, like, my mom said that my dad didn't know what happened. He didn't know. Like, so how are y'all, how are y'all going to arrest me for that shit? So I sent him to jail. Um, even though I'm fucking innocent, they took me to jail. And I was there until yesterday I got out. Um, and then I have to live with my mom now, just like no problem. Like I'd rather be here and happy and be able to be the girl that I know I can be and have my future and everything. Um, but my brother and Bella and Lucas all have my cats, so I have to go get that. Um, the whole school fucking knows. Everyone's gonna judge me, even though they don't know what fucking happened. I'm like. I have like court dates and everything, but <clears throat> hopefully everything turns out good, but yeah. Mr. Shelton, was that the videos you received? Yes. Is that the first time you had heard about the incident? Yes. Okay. Um, did you ever talk to Megan about it after? Um, I believe that after I received these, I had, um, I had stopped communication, so uh, I don't believe so. I don't have anything else, Judge. Thank you. Mr. No questions. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, any questions? I don't have any other witnesses for today. Thank you. My uh, two remaining witnesses in this case are, of course, the trooper who's an officer in charge and was last. Um, and my remaining witness is Dr. Laura Seawald of Hurley Medical Center, who is an ER doctor who's working today and is tomorrow at 930.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is 2.25. We are going to conclude for today. Um, I will have you come back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Okay? Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, I'm sorry, please don't talk about the case, um, even between each other, no researching anything, no looking um, on the Internet, um, dictionaries, encyclopedias, anything of that nature, okay? Have a great night. All right, the jury. Okay, they turn the sound off. We'll recap in a moment. Wow, that was a very quick day. I'm telling you, this trial will be quick. They've got two remaining witnesses. They probably this trial will probably be done by Friday, right? Nothing in the people, Judge. Nothing at all. Okay, and Mr. Sanders, you will be concluding tomorrow. I will. Okay, and then you'll be calling witnesses. I'll be calling witnesses. I'm gonna move them up from Thursday. I'll try and get them here probably Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Okay, we will start at 9.30. I'm going to do my motion call in the morning. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Well, that's it for now, everyone. Let me just quickly... We're going to recap. Don't worry. I just want to make sure I set my screen up nice. Can you guys see when I make the banner for you at the top and at the bottom? Because I saw someone else say now, you only just saw at the bottom. Because at the bottom, just like in Le the Letitia staff trial, I'm putting the day, the witness, now put the day up there. The witness's name and everything as much as I can, okay? So, okay, let's just do this quickly. There we go. And... <laughs> wow, okay, so... This trial is going to go quick. I don't know what to think. I'm still on the neutral fence. I'm like, sure, okay, you can't, like, because I'm trying to think of so many scenarios. So, like, if you have a mom or dad, I um, hope this doesn't trigger anyone who's, like, got cancer. But then you take an action that just, like, speeds their death up. Like, whoa, what is that? What goes on? Like, I mean, what, what do you think about the video? You know, because the thing is saying like, I was just like, oh my word, she says, I was just like, go and check on him. Like, what do you mean? But yet we know from the friend's testimony that she was like, go over there and get the credit card pin because the credit card pin wasn't working. So her whole focus that day was like, oh my word, I'm going to the hair salon. Freaking pin's not working. The dad was supposed to take her, right? So I'm not at this point seeing it as she stole his credit card and ran off and just did what she wanted it's like she had an appointment she was clearly pissed off that he was unable to take her right and so she threw all the stuff on him and went anyway but to me it seemed like she didn't realize <laughs> what this would do now does that change anything no it's just not in my opinion like premeditated right it's not like premeditated like i'm gonna now put this on you but we don't know yet we don't know Although, there's only two more witnesses, so we're going to have to make up our mind pretty quickly. <laughs> it's the grisly jury over here. Um, the thing is that the Dr. Kanu Virani, forensic pathologist and clinical pathologist who performed the autopsy, I mean, he did say that Conrad, who's the victim, he was 64 years old when he died, right? He had a lot of health problems, which would put him at a disadvantage when this happens, right? So he was already in a terribly disadvantaged health scenario when these chemical burns happen. So it was very difficult for his body to recover. If we think of the heart being enlarged, chronic heart disease, um, he was on dialysis, his kidneys weren't functioning properly, that's why he was on the dialysis. Uh, there was an, he had an ulcer, kidney disease, hypertensive heart disease. He, I've just wrote down all these things, right? Compli so he died from complications of the chemical burn, but the cause of death, they said chemical burns with complications, and the, the manner is homicide. That's what this doctor said. So, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brenda says, I'm not sure. Need more info, not pointing any fingers yet. Just don't know what you think. I mean, again, there's some cases where you're like, what the hell? Remember, like, Aiden Fucci? I mean, he was a teenager. That was hectic. That was a very hectic, gruesome, brutal case. Tristan Bailey's case, Aiden Fucci. 
So you can't say but this one is a teenager or these teenagers because some teenagers do really, some children do really horrendous things, right? All I know is that the brain is only properly formed, apparently, according to psychologists, right at age 25. Okay, so I always try to take that into account of like, what is their decision making? And I'm just thinking that her decision making that day could have been like, mother pucker and just like throwing things. Now, does it make it okay? No. Was she having a tantrum? Sure. It sounds like it. But did she know that putting that, that lie on her, on him, sorry, the lie powder, did she know what damage that could cause? Because by the video I saw, it doesn't really seem like it, right? Well, that's also, uh, Tree says, considering this generation lives on live streaming, also feel her lack of emotion after the fact says a lot. Yes. <laughs> Chopper says, you forget. I don't forget. Who are you saying forget? <laughs> There's a lot of information online. You mean like Uncle Google? Come on, man. Can they show us the Google searches? Did they even do that? That's how we're going to know. we got to know, was the lie from Walmart and what were the Google searches? Then we know. <laughs> right. So, yeah, this is Cha Cha Dodd says, regardless of her actions indicate that she meant to harm, no matter to what extent. So, wow, that last witness was there so quickly. Huh? Let's just see. We had Austin, her brother, Blake, the friend of the brother, the forensic pathologist. That was it. What a short day. Oh my goodness. You say I could not understand the video. Could you say it in instead? Should we say what she was speaking in? <laughs> what was she saying there? You know, in uh, <laughs> teen language. But it just seemed like, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? We can, uh, let me just see if I can look at it again. Hold on. Is it happening? Is it not happening? Or I have to look at my own damn stream. Yep. Okay. I wonder what that would do if I did that. You know? If I played my own stream. So just hold on one second. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. Become part of this community. I see lots of new faces around here. And we'd love for you to be part of this Grizzly True Crime community. Um, here, if you don't know, I'm Gizzle K. I'm South African. Living in the Netherlands. If you're wondering, what accent is that? If you're like, what look is that? Well, Ancestry.com would say all kinds. My DNA results were just like... <laughs> exotic okay all kinds <laughs> so yes and over here we like map time uh, we like documents we like trials um, and seeing cases through as much as we can of course um, and snarky time where appropriate right um, you say thank you G for covering these trials thank you Hope Hall for uh, supporting the channel for three months already I'm quickly gonna find my stream just hold on one second here it comes I might have to mute myself then. I just want to see that video again, you know? So we had Dr. Kanu Virani and Blake Shelton. Okay, so let's go to the video part. Wait. Okay. They didn't show much of it, but let's see. I hope it doesn't like double play or something. Will it double play? <laughs> I don't know. Let's mute me and see. Okay, so she's talking there about going to a hotel for her 18th birthday because that day she turned 18. She was going to a hair salon for an appointment to prepare for this birthday party that she was probably trying to impress all her friends, right? Right. So she's going to a hotel. She's having an 18th birthday party. And that's what she's just saying. Like, oh, and she's explaining what she did that day, right? Okay. And Kayla, um, go to my house because she was on the street to get it from him. And she was like, Megan, your dad's not okay. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, there's like burns on it. And I was like, what? Like, I was so confused because I was like, oh, why? Why is he like, like, what is happening? I was like, my instinct. To me, she seemed like a typical teen that's confused. Literally, like, literally, like, what? What do you mean there's burns on him, right? So Suzanne Chan says, what would you say if she was... We're going to play the video more now. Don't worry, don't worry. What would you say if she was victimized for years by the very person who had control of her? I know. That's why I'm on the fence. 
And, you know, could it be a case of neglect, which is a form of abuse? Could it be curse of control? Could it be all kinds of things? If he was, if he was an alcoholic, does it excuse what she did? No, but curse of control laws are interesting when you start thinking of the excusing of things. If you look at the Sally Challen case, you're going to know what I mean. But I'm like, hmm, very interesting. So I'm just, I'm just keeping it neutral. So let's listen. I'm just going to go back slightly, just hear it all. So she thinks he stood up and fell and she's not sure why he's got the burns. Mary says, I'm not sure she intended to kill dad, but why go get the lies? I don't think lie was in the living room. I don't think trash was either or hair dye or the other chemicals that the, the friend earlier talked about. Friend of Austin. Sorry. I can't remember his name right now. Hold on. Hold on. Austin. Ah, just from the morning stream. Um, anyway. The friend of her brother, Austin, said that there was like a lot of liquid around the couch. It was, you know, dampened. There was, Austin said there was like white powder on there. So I don't know, man. Like, did she just get so pissed off that she just threw a whole bunch of stuff? I mean, there was bread there too. Bread, trash, hair dye products. Um, and then the lie as well. Now, what's the most damaging is the lie for, for sure, you know. Especially if there's water added. And we don't know if she mixed it with the water and threw it on him. Or if she threw the lie on him and then water to like maybe try to get him to wake up. And I'm not excusing her behavior. I'm just saying. I'm trying to think like her. Right? Of just like what, what was it? Because one thing I did learn on a course of control I recent, course I recently did with Laura Richards. Is that <laughs> children who are abused or coercively, con con uh, coercively controlled. It's normal for them to ruminate over killing their parents. Now, are you allowed to kill your parents? Of course not. It's just that those feelings and that rage can really build up over time, right? So what do you do with that? Okay, don't kill your parents. Don't kill anyone. I just wonder, like, if she really wanted to snap. Let's say she snapped and she wanted to, like, obliterate this guy. Do you really think she's going to throw bread at him? And whatever's lying around, just grab things and start throwing it on him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just not so sure about that. That's what I mean. The method is like, really? I don't know if she would calculate that. But anyway, um, Caroline, a girl says birthday party at a hotel. She may be a bit spoiled also. Well, we just don't know that either. What kind of hotel was it? You know, what kind was it? Was it a hotel, a motel, a holiday? We don't know. And I'm sure then, yeah, she was probably trying to impress her friends. You know, maybe it was the normal thing to do at the school she was at. We also don't know why was she living with her dad? Where's the mom? Apparently they got divorced years, many years ago is what Austin said. So did she stay with her dad because she wanted to stay with her friends at the school? You know, there's many factors that could, that could, well, many things that could factor into this, which is why I'm just like, oh, I'm keeping open in mind, keeping an open mind. And I'm always the one who has to go and help him off the floor and make sure he's okay. Um, so I was like, call my brother. I didn't know what to do. Like, so I just told her to call my brother and they called an ambulance. And it's like, apparently there were like chemical burns on him. And I'm like, I was so confused. Like, I didn't even know what's happening. And then my brother's like yelling at me saying, I did it. I didn't do it. I, I When I left, he was perfectly fine. I would never intentionally hurt my dad. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm against violence. That my dad's like my best friend. I'd never hurt him. And my brother is like, my brother wasn't even there. And Lucas, Kobe, and Bella West over here are like, since they're our best friend, they were like. So why not go home and check on him, says Vicky Nuska. Why didn't the friend call an ambulance? Do these people have IQs? That, that is a good question. But the thing is, why not go home and check on him? Well, she was, her dad was supposed to drive her to the salon, take her home and take her to the hotel for her birthday party, or at least to the salon and then to the hotel, right? But seeing as he was passed out drunk, 
which is what she says, right? And what is blood alcohol level proved? I mean, at 0 0.3, 0 0.3, it could be fatal, potentially fatal. It's quite high, right? Now, the thing is, she didn't have a ride, so she was so pissed off. So she's like, oh my word, she had to get a ride to go to the hair salon. And then her friend, Kayla, was going to pick her up as well. But she couldn't pay at the hair salon because the freaking credit card wasn't working, right? So then she's like, oh my word, just go to the house and can you please just check on the card or ask him what the penny is or whatever it is. The friend goes over to the house and then she finds the dad there on the couch, but like, ooh, with like the, the nails and the skin and the, oh my word, the chemical burns, right? Saying like, your dad is not okay. You do, you, like to the dad, like saying to her friend, your, your dad doesn't look right. Like his skin is literally, she said greenish and purplish and reddish. And they also said in opening statements afterwards, the skin was like quite blackened, right? So, yeah, why did they not call an ambulance? I don't know, but they did call Austin, her older brother, and he's like, call 911. This is what you do, okay? You call 911. So, yes. I think I'm playing devil's advocate here. They called you to the police, and they were like, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, she did. Well, you there? Yeah, you went there. Neither was I. Nobody knows what happened, but they all blamed me. Because people like you in this world don't know how to shut up. And so they all, like, they blamed me. They said it was my fault. I wasn't there. I didn't. The cops came to the hotel I was at, and they were like, so your dad is severely injured. He's in the hospital, and everyone's saying you did it. You mean everyone who wasn't there? Is that true? Because... I mean, if you're on TikTok, okay, or YouTube or whatever, this this looks like normal teenage drama physiology. You know what I mean? I think she thought at that point, this is like so much drama that I don't need. Which tells me, in my personal opinion, that she didn't know what she was doing would cause this much harm. Did she want to maybe cover him in trash? Sure. Or cover him in stuff? Did she maybe want to think this will sting a little? Maybe. But did she realize it would do this? Probably not. Probably not, right? Uh, I think they said 41%, right? 41%. And he had his legs amputated. Damn. And they were saying, like, my mom said that my dad didn't know what happened. He didn't know. Like, so how are y'all... How are y'all gonna arrest me for that shit? So, I sent him to jail. Um, even though I'm fucking innocent, they took me to jail. So that's what they showed. So Rebecca Poplin said, like, if he urinated, it could have activated the light powder. I know, right? If he urinated, spilt beer on him, spilt Gatorade on him, got up for a shower, many things. Whoever gave us some of that type of evidence of how exactly did this happen, right? Thank you to everyone that, that is subscribing right now. I see you. Thank you so much. Um, and Alicia says, also, if the dad did a bug bomb in the house, isn't that dangerous to your lungs or brain? Good question as well, because he said... Now, I don't know if he said it because he was trying to, you know, excuse her behavior, like what she threw on him or whatever, and just like, it's okay, we did a, a bug bomb. But he said it, that initially, that <laughs> there was a, a bug bomb in the house for, for fleas, right? I think that's what he said. Oh, my word. Wow. So, yes. Okay, let's see. I'm not T-Pain says she was probably like, he's drunk on my birthday. I'm going to put whatever I can on him so that when he wakes up, he realizes how bad he messed up. That's what I'm thinking. It's almost like a statement of like, you're trash, dad. Like, what the hell, man? It feels like a teenager thing, right? Just like, I'm going to cover you in literally trash, bread. That's why I'm saying it. Trash and bread and also my hair dye because he didn't take her to the hair salon. So why is the hair dye there? Freaking hair dye. 
don't want to do my box colors anymore I want to go to a proper salon right so i think it's like angry and i'm not i'm not trying to excuse her behavior i'm just like this sounds like one of those like juvie cases where she she will need to have consequences i'm not saying no consequences but did she mean to like kill him or make him suffer for five months probably not and just remember with alcoholism if that's what he was struggling with which by the sounds of it he was if he was that's already a life of struggle he's already struggling and his health was already deteriorating he had heart disease chronic heart disease disease and kidney disease and an ulcer and all kinds of stuff you know what i mean so hmm very interesting very interesting i'm finding all your input as well very interesting in this trial which is why i decided to bring this one to you because i'm like this is one with a lot of conversation points of like what do we make of this yes uh miss siren says if she was trying to wake him up then the bit is a lie she does remind me a little bit of leilani yes if you don't know who leilani is we talk about the quinton simon case she, she, similar appearance yes okay so rochelle says did she take the lie out of its container directly or was it in another container and she didn't know what it was well from what we saw in the morning session they showed some exhibits uh, did you guys see that i hope so if not maybe i can go find it just hold on um but they showed us some photo exhibits and there it looked like the bottle i mean the, the cap must have been open let's take a careful look hold on we're gonna go there double g time double g <laughs> now if you go down on any video here look here look here scroll down you will find timestamps if you don't know what the hell i keep saying timestamps you're probably like what is that even this is what timestamps are it's in the pinned comments okay you can see if you hover over the video look it shows you the chapters you see that it shows you what it is and i timestamp everything for you that takes ages <laughs> But I do it because I love it. I love it. If I find a channel, the timestamps, I'm like, thank you. My word, I would hate to go through a whole stream and like, see, what did I miss? You know, I just tried to put key moments there. So now we can go here to photo exhibits, click on it. Okay. And there we go. Did you Boom. <laughs> okay. Let's, oh, no, no. We want to click on it again. Sorry. Hold on. Photo exhibits. There we go. Make it bigger. Okay. I'm going to put the sound off over there. Double G. G from the morning to G in the evening. <laughs> okay, let's do it like this. Then I can show you. How about this? Okay. Let's make it big. Boom. <laughs> let's make me smaller. So here's the bottle right above me. And there's all the, all the stuff, right? Yeah, no, no liver damage at the time of the autopsy because by then he hadn't had a drink in five months also when i spoke to criminal profiler john kelly who has worked with a lot of um, addicts particularly alcoholics right well all, all kinds right he's got a, a book as well uh, finding lazarus the point is that he said the the people who wait how do i wear this properly the fatality rate in recovery was the highest with alcoholics, which was very interesting to hear because he said once they come off the alcohol, sometimes then the body just can't really like handle it without care. Now this Conrad uh, Emirowitz was in intensive care, so he did have the care. I just wonder if all the complications are also part of that, like no alcohol suddenly from 0.3 level, blood alcohol level to just nothing. I don't know, man. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Um, Scott, no. Will you please stop telling me what to do on my own channel, number one? This is called a live stream, in case you didn't know. And it's it's when we interact with the audience. It's what we do. <laughs> Pernil's like, delete that. We interact with the audience. It's what a live stream is for. If you want clean, crisp, perfect videos, just telling you a story, that's not me. It's not me. We engage over here, okay? We're, we're interacting. So thank you all for being here. <laughs> Caroline says, yay, liver. You rooting for the liver? Yes. Let's see what Hey Joe says. My ex-husband died from kidney liver and torn appendix damage. Drugs and drinking killed him. Right? Okay, so here's a picture of, this is the first photo they showed. And let me just go a little bit forward. There's the other one. There's the other one. 
household, 100% lie. I mean, even the label's a little bit like, shh, right? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Savannah says, there are definitely some split views on a lot of different aspects of this case, but keep calm and grizzly on. Someone said that above, and I like that little quote a lot. <laughs> keep calm and grizzly on. Yes, Scott is giving all the red flags of a coercive controller. My way or no other way. Okay, <laughs> with a thousand people here, can you just please shut up, lady, on your own channel? Okay, moving on. So, yeah, we have conversations here, says Donald. <laughs> Donald, this is turning into a snark session. We better shut it down now. So we'll save that for a member stream or my second channel, where I might do a little parody of that at some point. So, yes, look, it says gets the clog out, household like The label's all... <laughs> Austin said he didn't see this in the house usually, so that's quite interesting. Um, so I don't know. Do they have receipts of when this was bought? Do they have footage from Home Depot, Walmart, or the grocery store? Target? Anywhere? <laughs> We're going to get this. Did they just have it in the house, you know? And I don't know. It's, it's powdered as well. Do you guys have lye in your house? Hmm? I don't have lye in the house, but we do have a liquid drain cleaner, so I must go look what it is. Yes. Yeah. Discerning light says most alcoholics die from pancreatitis or kidney failure before liver failure. Mm hmm. And Gamer Lover says looks like she threw the bottle at him. That is that as well. The father was naked but covered in a blanket on the couch. Now, my question is, you see, from the time when she threw all the stuff on him and left, did he perhaps, did he get up and go and shower and then go and lie on the couch again naked, not feeling well? from maybe inhaling some fumes or things, or not. You know what I mean? There's so many things still. Oh, did I, did I miss someone becoming a member? Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, CZ, you feel like me. Not sure she was spoiled because of the hotel birthday party. I think the party uh, is at the hotel because of the flea problem and the house is messy. That's embarrassing to a teen. Right? Keeping up appearances um, at school. There's a lot of pressure that teens have as well, especially to not get bullied. bullied. Bullying is not okay, but it happens. And especially now in the social media age. Oh my word, it does happen. And so maybe she was like, oh my word, okay, I just have to get this day right. I just have to be like everyone else, be normal. Like everybody maybe has a party at this hotel. Maybe they have it at their, or they have it at their houses, which yes, they might not be, um, and I'm speculating because we don't know it for a fact, but an alcoholic dad there. Maybe she's embarrassed by that. Does it mean she should do this? No. But did she know what she was doing? I don't think so. I'm just not sure. So what do you guys think the outcome of this will be so far? Because I'm now not sure. I'm getting quite anxious, actually. <laughs> yes, it's another word for caustic soda. Yes, it is. Janet. Yeah, yeah we almost got our snarky pants on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, Blue Canary says... <laughs> Blue Canary would like to admit <laughs> that they do not have powdered lye in their house. Thank you, Blue Canary. Me, me neither, yeah. This is probably, this is, I think this is like what we have as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it for, that was, that was a quick day. Afternoon, day two. I mean, wait, what time did we start? At half past. It wasn't very long at all. Yeah. Okay. That's it as well. That's it. Hey, Joe, it was an 18th birthday, super big day. So she's probably, she was probably like, imagine it though. Pro we're just speculating, but she was probably like, dad, you promise it's my birthday tomorrow. Okay. You cannot mess this up. Will you take me to the salon? And he's probably like, yes, yes, of course. I'll take you to the salon. Okay. Again, I'm speculating, speculation warning. So imagine when she wakes up and it's like 18th birthday, she wakes up and there's Again, speculatively, I'm just covering my own ass by saying this because we don't know. I'm just imagining how it could go. I'm just like, yes, it's my 18th birthday. I'm an adult now, right? <laughs> I'm a woman. And then it's just like her dad is just passed out, cannot wake up, drunk, 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 right? That's what she's saying. That must have made her so mad and disappointed. And her heart probably broke, right? Does it mean she can do this? No, but what did she do? Threw a bunch of stuff at him. Sure. Okay. Do you think she should go to prison? For life, for this. Do you think so? Hey, Heinemann says, I still don't understand the charges. We know the charges though, right? I'm just checking. So, Megan Joyce Emirowitz 19 is charged with unlawful possession or use of harmful devices, imitation or irritants, causing the death, a felony, 
and a misdemeanor domestic violence for the October 2021 assault of her father, Conrad Emirowitz. Right? I just mean, like, when you look at true crime cases, okay, and you see all these DV dudes, okay, you see the DV dudes, man, I mean, they get away with so much, you know what I mean? So many times. It takes on average a person to try to leave, like, seven times. On the seventh time, do they leave successfully, or is it a true crime case is almost what we're seeing, right? So this, I'm not excusing it. I'm just like, if it's like, grill her, go to prison for life, like, okay, could, that's fine. But can we then apply that to all the other cases too, please? And I mean, like... All these DV boys then, please, please, then also put them. Mm. Not just lock up for a little bit. I mean, for life then, okay. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, Blue Canary says, seriously, she knew it would burn him if she was the one who did it. How would she know? Maybe she just threw everything at him. I mean, what if it was the hair dye that really caused a lot of problems? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. You're like, lol, DV dudes. Oh, we're seeing so many of these cases, like Adam Fravel. Remember that one we just saw? Oh, man. But there's so many. Honestly, on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, I retweet a lot of them, and it's very sad to see how many there are. I'm just going to go forward to this couch picture here as well. Let's take this off. Here we go. Close up. I'm probably in the way. I'll make myself small in the corner here for Scott. And just be silent. <laughs> okay. There we go. Sure, that this looks hectic. Not that we can see exactly what's going on here, just... The material even looks like shredded there and stuff, like the... Soda... Chowed through the material, right? Kim Burley says, why so much water though? But we don't know if it's so much water, or if it's like... At that point, body fluids? Is it beer? Is it a bucket of water? Did she throw a bucket of water on him? Because that would make sense to me too, if she's like, you know what, just wake up! And then eventually... Got a ride to the hair salon. Missed Siren says, charges don't look like a life sentence to me, even if guilty. Yeah, if convicted, she would get a life sentence. So it's not life imprisonment, from what I understand. It's a life sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, silent and small in the corner. I just want to see if there's any more photos. I think that was it. These are the photos they showed us. Okay. So... Uh, they said they're gonna be back at 9 30 a.m. So let's be back around then. That's Eastern time 9 10 11 12 1 2 3 30 So between yeah somewhere around 9 30. I'll be monitoring the stream. Let's go live at that time. Yes And let's see if they are on because today. I think they started just after 10 So yes, let's just take this off quickly. There we go Stefan says, wouldn't the blanket be burnt as well? It does look a little bit, not burnt though, but char charred. The material looks a bit, so I'm not sure. But good point, good point. Yeah, that's true. Jeepslo says, he was drunk on a birthday. I totally get the disappointment, but things can be criminal. A absolutely. Yeah, still, as we say, don't do that. But yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jellybean says the bucket would be on the floor next to the couch. But what do we know was on the floor? Because only today did we find out, oh, there was also bread, trash, hair dye. I mean, what else was there? Lots of liquid, lots of liquid. And what the friend was saying earlier was, uh, the friend of Austin's, right? Not Blake, the other one. Just can't remember his name for the life of me. But we can go to the stream from earlier and see it, right? Um, is that it was so much liquid, he wasn't sure. Like, what is that? Didn't touch it. Not sure. Yeah. Uh, Java Junkie says, I'm curious if they will have a Google search history. So yes, I will see you guys again tomorrow. Make sure that you like and share with the hashtag Megan uh, Emerowitz. I'll show you now just quickly here. That is how you spell her name. So hashtag Megan Emerowitz. Okay, try to do that on Twitter. <laughs> if you do it and you share it, then tag me. I'll reshare it. I'll retweet it. Uh, Megan Emerowitz. Practice the surname a few times there. Um, so that it's categorized all together nicely. You can share it on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever you like. Um, that will help a lot also to for the reach so that others join us tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, day three. And they said there's only two more, two remaining witnesses. So let's see that. It, and then I think it sounds like the prosecution will rest their case. Yes. Okay. And yeah, for anyone asking why were his legs amputated? Because of the infection, the ongoing infection from the burns. 
and from all the other complications, yes. I also want those pictures. Hey, Heinemann, me too. Pictures, please. We want to know everything. Of course, we're true crammers over here, people. We want to see exhibits. Not autopsy photos, please. No, no. But exhibits. Not on this channel. If they want to send it to us, that's fine. We can observe. But here we want to see what was the scene like. That would help a lot, right? I hope they show some of that tomorrow. So, thank you so much, moderators. Thank you so much to all my patrons, members, and all the new subscribers. Uh, really appreciate it. There we go. I see people subscribing. I quickly want to... Let's see if we can... Can we turn off slow mode? Yes. Subscribers, you can subscribe for... I'm going to make it any duration, and we don't have slow mode on. Awesome. So, see you tomorrow, everyone. Okay, stay safe, and I'll keep posted on all the other cases we're following as well. Okay, bye.